So Sonny asks, uh, why, will, why would people join you if you're brand new to network marketing? This would be a good question if you did everything. Like if you were the shipping department, if you were human resources, if you were customer support, if you were the you know, doctors who invented the ancient formula, if you were the comp plan expert, if you cut the checks, if you did all the training, and if there were no one, in, and you did all those things, and there was no one in that company that you built from scratch that has ever made money, then this would actually be a pretty good question. You're missing the point of network marketing when you ask this kind of question, right? And so it, you know, if, okay, so let's say I'm part of a, let's go mild here. And let's say I'm part of a 50 million a year network marketing company, which is a fairly small company. You know, there's, there's companies out there doing 11, $12 billion a year. There's several companies at a billion dollars a year, many companies at, you know, I would say, 300 million and more a year, but let's just say we're part of a smaller company doing 50 million dollars a year. Still pretty good, right? 50 million a year, not bad if you think about it, but smaller M MLM company. So if I'm brand new to that, is the fact that I'm brand new, does it affect the shipment of products or the delivery of service? No, none, right? Because you, you're not responsible for that. Does it affect the compensation plan? Like if, if I join someone who's brand new, do I come in at a lower level, you know, in the comp plan? Whereas if only I would have found a veteran, then I would have come in at 20% higher. Uh, no, you come in at the exact same spot, okay? So is your compensation affected? Uh, no. Uh, if I'm coming into a, a smaller company, $50 million a year, um, am, I, am I unable to access the training that has been established? Am I unable to attend the events that this company runs, or am I able to attend those despite me joining someone brand new? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm able to do all those things. And so it's actually a very small way to think when you think it matters that you're brand new in network marketing on whether someone has success or not. And in fact, I would say it's dangerous. It's dangerous because it'll prevent you from talking to more people, but it's even more dangerous than that is you thinking that you're responsible for every facet of their success. You're not. You should be a professional. In fact, I think, in my opinion, it's a huge advantage if you're newer to network marketing because you have to point to resources. See, a system is something that's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not tied to a person. That's what a system is. And so if, if the only way that you create success is if your upline teaches you how to create success, then that's just not a system. It's not a system, okay? A system is, you know, how, how do, uh, how do uh, McDonald's, how do they run so successfully? And just name the last time you saw McDonald's close down. I'm not aware of any, right? I'm sure there's some, like I'm sure someone would be like, yeah, there's one right down my street, right? I'm sure, and they probably just moved to a better location, right? Um, so I'm unaware of any McDonald's that uh, that ever closed down, but they're not ran by uh, MIT grads, all right? They're not ran by you know Harvard or Wharton graduates of business that are so sophisticated at their scaling processes that they can run the McDonald's. They're ran by an 18 year old. They're ran by you know sometimes okay 23 year old, okay, but usually not above a 23 year old. I don't think. How's that possible? Because it has nothing to do with the 18 year old or 23 year old. It has to do with the system. And so you need to become and really embrace the concept that uh, you are there to point to events and to point to tools. That's what network marketing is for. And if you think that it's about you answering every question or you, you know, running it like a mother hen to every person that, that joins the, the team and, and everything is reliant on you, then you just, you're just not going to build a large team. And so there are people and I've, I've spent, we have clients, we have clients, uh, you know, like Nicola Smith Jackson built a team of 300,000 people. Let me tell you, her phone doesn't ring off the hook. Why? Because they have a system, they have tools, they have events that people can plug into. And so you need to embrace the concept that all you are is you're just, you're just point guide and direct point guide and direct, right? Hey, just check out the fast start video. Hey, go check it out. It tells you what to do. 
Hey, oh, uh, yeah, the training? Yeah, we got the training archive right over here. Oh, you don't know how to prospect a warm market? Yeah, there's a training video right in the archive, right over there. Go check it out. Oh, you want to reach the next rank? Well, you might want to come to the next event with me. I'm going. You know, you want to hop in my van or you, want, you know, we got a lot of people going. You want to hop in with them? Okay. And so you need to learn to point to events and tools rather than you think that you need to know everything because it's dangerous. And I'll tell you, if you, if you really want to slow the growth of your team, then just learn everything and have it all about you, right? So the best thing, this is so crazy, the best thing that you can do for long term, big money in network marketing, you ready for this? Make yourself irrelevant. Make yourself irrelevant. And so, you know, I look at, so, you know, my wife and I, we sold our network marketing position uh, early last year. And we decided that because, you know, we're, we're being asked to speak on different network marketing company stages, we're being hired by different network marketing company leaders to lead their team and work with their team and, you know, speak on their stages as well. We felt it was no longer congruent for us to have an actively growing team and also serve the profession as a whole. We felt that there was some incongruency there, didn't feel good about it. And so it didn't make financial sense. It, it really didn't. You know, at least when you look at it one dimensionally, it didn't make financial sense for us to sell that position because it was spitting off six figures, you know, residual, no, no problem. And, but we looked at the big picture and for congruency's sake, we wanted the ability to say, hey, you're in a safe zone. We're not actively recruiting. And, you know, so we, we needed that peace of mind and we felt our calling was, you know, to go into to training. Not that it's better, but just that was our calling, right? And so that's what, that's what we've been doing. But when we sold that position, the, pers the people that bought that position, they were a little concerned. And they said, well, Ray, you know, you and Jess, you're kind of gurus. And, you know, if you guys leave, then, you know, how many other people are going to leave? And I said, very little. And like, well, why you say that? I'm like, because it wasn't about us. It was about the team. We had created a team entity. We had created a team culture. We had created a team uh, you know, community. And so, you know, we even had like, a, we had as part of the contract, hey, if X percentage leaves, then you know, your fee is actually reduced. They would pay me less, but that didn't happen. And we knew it wouldn't happen because it wasn't about us. It wasn't the Ray and Jess team. Okay. It was a, a very specific team that still runs today. They still use a lot of the stuff that, that we used to use last year. And they've built upon those foundations because it was a system, right? It was a team within the system of the company, which is a, a very well-ran company. And so it has nothing to do with you, you being new. You need to be able to point, guide, and direct. Point people to tools, point people to events, and you're not the one shipping the product. You're not the one that you know came up with the red dye number five. You're not the you know you're not the you know person you know wrapping the boxes and put, putting the packing peanuts in there, right? And you're not the person cutting the check. So stop making it all about you. And instead, instead of you making it all about you and worried about your self-image, make it about possibility. Who can you make an impact on, right? Who can you help today? And and I'll tell you, there are many scenarios where someone was brand new, brought in an absolute hitter and brought in someone who crushed it in the company and people are gonna crush it in the company, they're gonna crush it in the company if you point them to the resources that they need. And so there you go, I hope, that was a great question. I hope that that helps some people out because just because you're new doesn't mean there's any excuse for you not to go and talk to people because you know if there's people making money in your company, then obviously, th did they make money without you? Uh, yeah, right, had nothing to do with you. And are there people that make money that don't have great uplines? Are there people that have made money in network marketing that their upline disappeared? Yes, happens all the time. So it's not about you, it's about the system, it's about events, and it's about tools. So utilize those things and you won't have a problem.